Hello guys, I hope you found previous lecture helpful. In our previous lecture, we discussed various cells found in the nervous system. And today we will discuss the action potential. As you know, the neurons receive information from the terminal buttons of exons of other neurons or its own terminal buttons and send it to the cell body. Cell body that integrates the information send it to the exon. Exon further carries the information to its terminal ends that transmit the information to the terminal buttons of its next neurons. The inside of the exon of most neurons are negatively charged compared to the outside and any difference in the positive or negative charges across the exon membrane is called membrane potential. When the neurons not communicating with any other neurons, their membrane potential will be approximately minus 70 millivolt, which is called resting potential. In the nervous system, neurons receive messages from other neurons, but it is possible to artificially simulate messages by applying electrical charge to neurons. If a positive charge is applied, the inside of exon will be more positive and the neurons will be called depolarized neurons. If a negative charge is applied, the inside of exon can become more negative and less positive. And when the inside of an exon become more negative relative to the outside, it is called hyperpolarized neuron. And this phenomenon will be called hyperpolarization. Up to this stage, it is repolarization. And below minus 70 millivolt, it is hyperpolarization. The positive and negative ions suddenly flowing in and out of the neuron. When a specific threshold amount of positive ions flows inside the exon membrane, it causes sudden depolarization, which is followed by a sudden hyperpolarization. And this is called action potential. Through this action potential, neurons send messages. So the action potential is temporary shift from negative to positive in the neuron's membrane potential. The spread of depolarization uh, followed by hyperpolarization actually begins at the point where the soma of uh, a neuron meets the exon and propagates like a wave all the way to its end of uh, the terminal buttons. This action potential then informing the terminal buttons to release neurotransmitters into the synapse. In fact, the electrical charge in the membrane potential is the result of balance between two opposing forces, the diffusion and electrostatic pressure. The molecules uh, from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration as diffusion and the particles with the same kind of charge repel each other and with different charges attract each other. The forces exerted by either the repulsion or attraction is the electrostatic pressure. If the intracellular fluid which is fluid within the cells and the extracellular fluid which is fluid surrounding the cells contain different ions. The forces of diffusion and electrostatic pressure contributed by these ions give rise to the membrane potential. There are several important ions in both the intra and extracellular fluids.
The organic anions, which may be proteins, are an intermediate products of cell's metabolic processes, are basically negatively charged and found only in the intracellular fluid. The chloride ions are also negatively charged ions that are found both in the intra and extracellular fluids, but it is predominant in the extracellular fluid. The positive ions, which are potassium and sodium, are found both in the intra and extracellular fluids, but the potassium ions are found predominantly in the intracellular fluid, while sodium ions are found predominantly uh, in the extracellular fluid. So how can sodium remain in the greatest concentration in the extracellular fluid? Uh, while the fact is, both the diffusion and electrostatic pressure tend to push it inside. The reason is, there is another force, the sodium-potassium pump, which continuously pushes sodium out of the exon. The sodium-potassium pump basically consist of a large number of proteins which are embedded in the membrane. These molecules called the sodium potassium transporters which are responsible to push three sodium ions out for every two potassium ions they push in. Because the membrane is not very permeable to sodium ions, the sodium potassium transporters very effectively keep the intracellular concentration of sodium at low level and by transporting potassium ions into the cell, they also slightly increase the intracellular concentration of potassium ions. As the membrane is not very permeable to uh, sodium ions and the sodium potassium transporters continuously pump out sodium, so what would happen if membranes suddenly become permeable to sodium? The forces of diffusion and electrostatic pressure would cause sodium ions to rush into the cell. This sudden inflow of positively charged ions would drastically change the membrane potential by depolarization. And this is precisely what causes the action potential. A brief increase in the permeability of membrane to sodium ions that allowing these ions to rush into the cell is also immediately followed by a transient increase in the permeability of membrane to potassium ions that allowing potassium ions to rush out of the cell. What is responsible for this transient increase in the permeability? As we discussed uh, that one uh, type of protein molecule embedded in the membrane as the sodium potassium transporter that is involved to actively pump sodium ions out of the cell and pumps potassium ions into the uh, cell. But there is another type of protein molecule that provide an opening that permits ions to enter or leave the cell. These proteins are ion channels which contain pores that can open or close when an ion channel is open, specific ions can flow through the pore and thus can enter or leave the cell. Now let's summarize the steps involved in generating an action potential. As soon as the threshold of excitation has reached, the sodium channel in the membrane open and the sodium rush into the cell. The opening of these channels is triggered by reduction of the membrane potential, which is called depolarization. These sodium channels open at the point 
at which an action potential begins, which is called threshold of excitation. The influx of positively charged sodium ions produces a rapid change in the membrane potential from minus 70 millivolt to plus 40 millivolt. Uh, as the membrane of exon also contains voltage dependent potassium channels but these channels are less sensitive than voltage dependent sodium channels for example they require a greater level of depolarization before they begin to open thus potassium channels begin to open later than the sodium channels and when the action potential reaches its peak in approximately uh, one millisecond the sodium channels become refractory and the channels become blocked and can't open again until the membrane once more reaches the resting potential at this time no more sodium ions can enter the cell and when the sodium channel become blocked the voltage dependent potassium channels in the membrane become open which permits the potassium ions to move freely through the membrane at this time the inside of exon is positively charged so potassium ions driven out of the cells by diffusion and by electrostatic pressure this outflow of cations causes the membrane potential to return towards its normal value and as it does so the potassium channels become to close again once the membrane potential returns to normal the sodium channels reset so that uh, in other depolarization can cause them to open again. Now let's talk about the uh, moment of message down the exon, which is called conduction of an action potential. First, we will explain the all or none law, which states that an action potential either occurs or does not occur. And once the action potential triggered, it is transmitted down the exon to its end and when it, an action potential reaches a point where the exon branches it splits but does not diminish in size the action potentials in exons control the strength of muscular contractions and represent the intensity of a physical stimulus but if action potentials or all or none events and even uh, action potential is exactly the same size how can they represent information that can vary in a continuous fashion like uh, a, a weak muscle contraction or bright uh, or dim, uh, bright to dim light. So variable information as represented by an exon rates of firing action potentials. A high rate of firing causes a strong muscular contraction and a strong stimulus such as bright light causes a high rate of firing in exons. For example, uh, if an exon might uh, respond to a dim light uh, such as a, a candle by firing uh, approximately 10 identical action potentials in a unit of time which is a low rate of firing the same exon might respond to a bright light by firing 100 identical action potentials in the same unit of time which is a uh, high rate of firing the conduction of an action potential actually in a myelinated exon is also different from the conduction of an unmyelinated exon as uh, the myelin is made up of uh, 
and solating cells which means the depolarization cannot occur in the myelinated region of neuron between the myelinated regions are uh, however small gaps uh, known as a node of Renvier which are unmyelinated as depolarization cannot occur in the myelinated region the web of depolarization therefore only occur in the node of Renvier thus action potential jump from node to node and this phenomenon is called saltatory conductions this saltatory conductions serves as a means of increasing the rate of propagation of action potential and this also increases the speed of an animal to react faster and think faster.